Ab Arrest With, Wales, 1979. From a distant land came a story of faith and religion that would shock and divide a nation. A story so shocking it would change the destiny of this small town for nearly three decades. Until one would rise to power, follow their destiny, and change the course of history. All in the name of the one true Messiah. He's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy! Oh, right. Sorry, what was the name again? Yes, Brian, of course, sorry. So this is the story of how Monty Python's comedy classic, The Life of Brian, the number one comedy film of all time, came to be banned in Aberystwyth for over 30 years. And how that ban was finally lifted in the most unusual circumstances. Yeah, um, cue titles. <laughs> Our story begins in Britain in the early 1970s, which looking back was a very different place. There were strikes, economic hardship, a cold war, and let's not mention the haircuts, the clothes and the sideburns. In fact, there wasn't much to smile about, except a very unusual comedy show. Monty Python's Flying Circus. Its brilliant, irreverent, surreal silliness left no part of the establishment unsatirized and completely revolutionized TV comedy. The series Monty Python's Flying Circus had begun in 1968 and ran for just over five years but made household names of the Pythons. Our chief weapon is surprise. Surprise and fear. Fear and fun. Our two weapons are fear and surprise. <laughs> John Cleese, Michael Palin, Eric Idle, Graham Chapman, Terry Jones and Terry Gilliam. Their unique comedy developed a huge cult following, which remains to this day. It's a comedy that isn't, that just doesn't see anything as out of bounds. I know it was something that my parents didn't like, but I did, and which made it kind of more rebellious. <laughs> It sort of just, just destroyed all the kind of sappy comedy, the kind of more lightweight comedy, the more jump up in the air and have fun comedy, and it just, it just put machine gun to all that. Their first original film was Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which was based upon the Arthurian legend. Then, in 1977, the team reunited to make their next project. Originally titled, Jesus Christ, Lust for Glory, it was clear the life of Brian was going to be their most controversial project to date. When we started thinking about it, I can remember thinking, oh God, I bet you we're going to get sort of some religious nutcases taking pot shots at us or something like that. And um, but then as we went on, um, and the, what it, it be, became clear and what it was about, then I, I kind of uh, relaxed a bit, because I thought well, it obviously wasn't about questioning belief, it's about, um, it's about uh, the priesthood, really. The Life of Brian, the story of an ordinary man mistaken as a messiah, was intended to lampoon the religious fervour of New Testament-era Judea. Shooting took place in Tunisia in the summer of 1978, and during production, the stars seemed unconcerned about the controversial subject matter of the film. We had no idea what it was going to be like. No idea at all. You know, we, we seem to be involved in making history. I and mean, what we tend to do is put a sort of modern consciousness on it. 
at sort of suburban attitudes in AD 33. It's about how they're complaining and grumpy and unpleasant. Enough. As philosophers, we're um, pretty nth rate. I mean, we're not uh, <laughs> not very high powered as philosophers or social critics. So our only claim to people's attention is that we can uh, sometimes make them laugh. But within that context, I hope you know something. We, we have attitudes, I suppose. It's our revolution. We can all do it together. Among the cast, alongside the Pythons, was an unknown young Welsh actress, Sue Jones Davis, who was cast in the film, much to her surprise. I think somebody had dropped out because they felt it wasn't feminist enough because she takes the clothes off. Oh, no! Let me explain, Mrs. Cohen. Who? Your son is a born leader. Those people out there are following him because... I was just a jobbing actress. And because I had the same agent as Cleese, I was put forward. You know, it's chance. Life is just chance. And if I could have been with another agent, I wouldn't have heard about it. But I heard about it and I was sent. And I went on the bus and I remember going on that. I can't remember the bus number, but I remember reading the script as I went. And I was in fits of laughter. In those days, you had conductors. And he came and said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm on my way to this audition. And it's so funny. And he said, well, you know, good luck, girl. And I got off and I went for the audition. And eventually I found out I'd got the part. More of Sue later. Nineteen seventy nine. And as Margaret Thatcher comes to office in the UK, the life of Brian opens first in America and immediately provokes complaints and outrage from a range of religious groups for its supposedly blasphemous portrayal of the life of Jesus Christ. But actually the first people to to, to, to protest against the film was the, the New York Association of Rabbis. That was a surprise because, uh, you know, we were rabbis complaining about this film. I wasn't whether it was going to be quite that controversial because you don't see the whole picture, you know, you do a scene and you're not seeing the overall um, finished product. So the bits you were doing, you think, oh, this is great. But you just think they were fun. And I suppose I was a bit naive to think it wasn't going to be controversial. The Python team were suddenly embroiled in a controversy that would make the film infamous the world over. Religious leaders across the globe condemned the film, urging it to be banned, and cinemas showing the film to be picketed. Well, the Monty Python team have taken horrible advantage of the Bible in practically every way you can think of, culminating in the crucifixion scene, which they transform into a song and dance act, so you can see why people are angry. Oh, I think they thought, here's a comedy film, Monty Python and Jesus, it's just bound to be, uh, you know, a sort of incendiary combination. It must be blasphemous, they're mocking everything we've got that we know about. And, you know, this were people who hadn't really seen the film. And we, I think we'd been a bit smarter than they thought. At the height of the controversy, two of the Pythons appeared on a late-night BBC One chat show to defend the film. With us tonight, another one-third of Monty Python, John Cleese and Michael Palin. They provided one of the most memorable TV debates of all time. And that was when, when I went on with John and talked to the Bishop uh, Mervyn Stockwood and uh, Malcolm Muggeridge. We actually explored the idea of doing a comedy film about Jesus, you know, with, with all the jokes about someone trying to book a table for 12 at the Last Supper. <laughs> so I so, said, you know, Saturday night I'll do you three fours. <laughs> Come in tomorrow, no, it's got to be tonight, and all those jokes. <laughs> And, and the more that, but the more that we read about Jesus and, and the background to, to his life, it was quite obvious that there was very little to ridicule in Jesus' life. Um, and therefore we were sort of onto a loser. So 